Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna be talking about world building mistakes. Creating a planet is a monumental task. And so mistakes are not only unavoidable to some degree, but some mistakes you have to let slip because you just don't have the words or manpower to solve them. And so if one of these things exists in your story, that does not mean that your story is bad. Also writing is an art. It is entirely subjective. I don't make the rules, no one makes the rules. Okay, so let's start off with a silly one. Names for things that are actually brands. There are some products that started out with a brand that gained so much fame and control over the market early on that we don't realize that we call the product by its brand name. And the list of words might surprise you. I know it surprised me when I went to do the research for this video and I thought I had a good handle on all of the different words and I did not. Now some of them I knew like Kleenex which are tissues or Sharpies which are permanent markers or Tupperware which is named after the creator Silas Tupper and therefore would not be named that in in an alternate world, but some are a little trickier and are so embedded in our language that you might not even know of an alternate word for them. For example, Novocaine, which is a brand name for procaine hydrochloride, which is owned by Hospera Inc. Or Ouija boards, which are a trademark of Hasbro Inc. Or Styrofoam, which is trademark of the Doc Chemical Company and in truth has never once been used to make a single plate or cup and rather is used to make construction materials. And then, what is used to make takeout containers and such is actually expanded polyesterine. Other examples include windbreaker, frisbee, band-aid, dumpster, jet ski, taser, velcro, and even seen eye dogs, which are technically only dogs trained by seen eye in Morristown, Mor Morristown, New Jersey. And any other dog is actually just a guide dog. And now you are going to second guess a whole bookload of words and I accept any and all blame for that. You're welcome. Mistake 1B, this is related enough to not deserve its own number, is sayings that don't make sense given your world. Your far future space traveling species probably won't use the term hit the nail on the head. Stealing his thunder can be literal in a world of magic. And to take it with a grain of salt could mean something completely different to a species to whom salt is toxic. Mistake number two, the world building without stopping to think about the story. If you don't already have a story in mind, it can be easy to think of the world as a foundation that you can later prop the story up on. But if you're making the world for a story, then the story will always be the core of that world. And if you build the world without putting the core in first, you'll have to poke it full of holes and force the story into a place it may not properly fit. Beyond that, world building doesn't have a clear place where it's done. So if you start with the world building, you put yourself at risk of never doing anything else. And that is called world builder's disease and is a known and feared problem. Number three, not accounting for evolution. And yes, this is a personal pet peeve of mine and not one that I saw all that often on the threads on Reddit, but I'm putting it in anyways. Does your alien species that communicates purely via telekinesis have vocal cords? Why did they develop those? Does your plant eating giant animal creature have big canine teeth? Stop to ask yourself, why is it for self-defense? Animals don't tend to grow daggers on their face for nothing. It is also worth factoring in that vestigial traits is a thing that you can use to hand wave away some of this. Though keep in mind that timeline is extremely important here. For example, wisdom teeth. Modern death history means we don't really need replacement teeth anymore, but it hasn't been around for long enough for them to disappear. So now they're just a huge inconvenience to us. And yes, that is the only example I have because all the other examples I learned in school are no longer considered vestigial traits. For this video, I went to pull up the example of whales having pelvic bones. And it turns out that since I graduated, a study came out that found that they are mildly useful for sex things with the whales, I guess. So they're no longer classified as vestigial traits. Keep in mind you can hand wave away some of this stuff by claiming that your fancy alien species can evolve more quickly or evolves more slowly. We do have actual examples of evolving more quickly here on Earth. For example, have you ever wondered why we don't have teacup cats or great bengals? It's because dogs have something called a slippery genome and I won't get super into the details, but it means that mutations are less likely to result in the failure of the cell or the fetus. And I am now rambling. This is what I get when I let myself talk about biology. I'm gonna have to cut all of this out. 
Anyways, just occasionally stop and ask yourself what pressure could have possibly resulted in a turtle the size of an island that breathes fire and yet eats mostly fish, which it turns out are relatively fireproof. Now number four, I'm gonna turn right around and contradict myself because that's the type of video that this is. Mistake number four is not letting yourself use the rule of cool. And if you hadn't already guessed, I am extremely guilty of this one. So the rule of cool states that the limit of willing suspension of disbelief for a given element is directly proportional to its awesomeness. That is to say that the cooler that something is, the more likely we are to suspend our disbelief to allow it to occur even if it's unrealistic. And even if there's no given evolutionary pressure for how this could have come about. As an example, we have Avatar, the one with the blue cat people. Now, by all appearances, Pandora's flora and fauna evolved under one singular pressure, which is what would look coolest on screen. And as far as I can remember, we aren't given any explanation for why everything is so damn sparkly and colorful and glowy, and yet we accept that everything is sparkly and colorful and glowy because it looks so damn cool. Truly realistic alien life is incredibly hard to conceptualize, even harder to describe, and would probably not come out looking as cool as we would like. And maybe your island-sized fire-breathing turtle is actually cool enough for you to be able to pull it off. I don't actually know, that's what beta readers are for. Now mistake number five is note taking the wrong way. 5A is not writing it down. Always write it down. Your traitorous brain will tell you that it will remember and it is a liar. I tried to live by the rule that if it's good, you'll remember it. I really tried and for me that's true. 67% of the time. The problem is that other 33% of the time had some gems in it and they're now at the bottom of a dirty puddle somewhere. The truth is this is a really bad filter because what you are gonna remember depends on so many different variables that you are guaranteed to lose some good ideas along the way. Mistake 5B is not taking detailed enough notes. Sometimes you have a world building idea so amazing that you just know you're gonna remember it, but you play it safe and you jot down a couple words cause that'll be enough to spark your memory. And then six months later you come back and you find those notes and you have no idea what a helium lizard is. As an overwriter, it's more common for me to hit the issue that I have 200,000 words of notes and not enough time to process them, but a helium lizard. That one's gonna haunt me. And mistake number 5C is taking too many notes with no organizational plan. Hello, crippling issue I've yet to recover from. Don't be like me and spend hours documenting your world building info on loose notebook pages with handwriting so bad it might as well be hieroglyphics because I guarantee you're gonna put it in a folder somewhere in a dark corner and you are never gonna go back to it. I guarantee that because that is what I did and it is still there and last year I took the mental time and energy to take pictures of it so I wouldn't, you know, risk losing that information if I lost those loose notebook pages and now I just have a project on Trello that has like 70 plus images of the notebook pages and it's still getting no use and is just wasted. <laughs> Ah, we have the technology, you might as well use it. Such as today's video sponsor, Campfire Technology. Have you ever seen such a smooth transition in your entire life? Don't answer that. Campfire Pro is a downloadable writing software designed to help writers stay organized. It functions 100% offline after download, and so it's especially perfect for those of you who can't be trusted to work on writing, when all it takes is Control T Y Enter to get you to the YouTube homepage. Drop a comment if that's how you got here. Campfire Pro has all sorts of writerly features for keeping track of your world building info, including a whole suite of world building features. The base software is a one-time purchase of $49.99 and the world building pack is an optional add-on of $24.99. But there's a 10 day free trial and a 10 day money back guarantee, so you can give it a try with no risks and see if it suits you. The software features pages where you can track your character's details, backstory, and even arcs. Timelines, which aside from being great for outlining, can be used to mark your world's major historical events. And the brand new world building pack, which you can use to track everything relating to species, cultures, religions, languages, philophys... 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 Words. 
how do they work? There is a link in the description to the site and I also have a video demoing the software, so I'll link that in the end cards and you can go check it out. Now back to the mistakes. Mistake number six, developing things no one will see. So my kitchen has built-in cabinets high up on the wall and there's like a foot of space above them, but every once in a while, Khajiit decides that he wants to go adventuring. Yes, my cat is named Khajiit. Every once in a while, Khajiit decides he wants to go adventuring and he gets up there because he has skills. I don't support his decision to Uber spiders all over the house. So I go up there and I get him down. And one of these times I decided to actually look in that one foot space that is full of spiders. And the wood up there, it's all naked. Open wood, there's Sharpie on. <laughs> permanent marker on numbers and measurements and it is a disaster zone. Why? Because no one is ever going up there except for the odd adventurous cat. So just remember, sometimes it's better to finish the project early than to spend all that extra time painting the top side of a cabinet. Mistake number seven is forgetting to factor in environment and its effects on things like culture. If the people you're writing about have historically lived in a harshly cold environment, odds are they aren't gonna have snakes as any sort of symbol. Unless it's a reality where reptiles evolved to be warm-blooded. It is just now occurring to me that I don't actually know if all snakes avoid cold climates. I don't know, I don't know a lot about snakes. Um, new example. A location near the equator of a planet or on a planet that doesn't have the same tilt that Earth has isn't gonna have the same seasons, then your world may not lend itself well to something such as a harvest festival because maybe there isn't a particular time of the year when a harvest occurs. And mistake 7B, 7, B. Mistake 7b is not considering where resources come from. If your world is in the middle of a super sandy, dry desert, then you have to factor in where are they getting their water? What about food? What about building materials? How does the sand affect what kind of buildings can even be built if it's ever shifting underneath? Mistake number eight is splitting rivers. Splitting rivers is something that the world building community cares a lot about, you see, it's really common for maps and fiction to describe splitting rivers, but it turns out that in real life, it is a very, very, very rare occurrence. And more often than not, it's the rivers join. And this is not a video where I'm gonna be describing river anatomy. So it would be absolutely ridiculous if I had spent an hour researching rivers and river splitting. And so even if it sometimes happens, just keep in mind that there are world builders out there who have very strong feelings about river bifurcation. I mean, splitting, again. Definitely didn't put an hour into researching that. But yeah, there is legitimately a whole subreddit for this and it hasn't had a post in two years, but it is a thing that exists and it is not as scared of you as you are of it. Number nine, going the extra mile to justify a cliched outcome. Maybe you have a super unique idea and reasoning for why your story is basically just Star Wars. But if your story is basically just Star Wars, that's all we're gonna see. It's honestly better to start off with a duplicated seed and then shape that tree into something unique rather than starting out with a different seed and shaping the tree into something we've already seen a hundred times. And if you want more videos on world building, I have quite a few of them. I will link a playlist in the end cards and in the description, so go check them out. And thank you so much for watching. 90% of you aren't subscribed. I see you there. YouTube shows me that data. Don't think you can hide. There's a button. It's red, I think, but you should click it because I told you to. And thank you so much for watching. As always, I will see you in the next video. Say you